credit to them. I, I'm listen. I'm just I'm just simply acknowledging the fact that the Celtics didn't, you know, just call it quits and, and leave with three minutes left in the game. They fought back. They put themselves in a position to win. They lost the game, and we're going to criticize this for him and talk all about it. And they and the third quarter was disaster. Rob Williams, I still don't think is playing enough. I mean, all the same issues we want to talk about, we'll talk about all over again. But at least they made it a game down the stretch. So I'm going to give them that. And that's pretty much all the compliments I can give them. I mean, you guys already talked about this was a bad Tatum game. I agree. I mean, even a couple of the drives he made, I thought he needed to just finish at the rim. Instead, he would do the step back or the or the fadeaway again. Weird and come up shots. Short. Yeah, weird yeah. shots. I mean, the turnover was awful, that pass. I mean, he held on to the ball. I mean, he gets, I, they get the steal. And he's holding on to it. I mean, there's two yeah. guys streaking to the basket and i don't know what he's what is, what is he waiting for i don't situation. know they got I away with both point. of those too yeah. i made that I point early did. in the they game did. guys with just like and again right okay everyone's everyone who wants to excuse tatum's gonna say he's only 22 so is luca you talk about a person who allows and again luca wasn't perfect and he missed a ton of shots too but you know, I, I mentioned those back-to-back -back drives it just I, I think that that was like a little little uh, microcosm of just kind of the difference there. Tatum's kind of going into the lane, and he this really low percentage floater to his leaning to his left off the back rim, and then the next possession, Luca comes in, has Tatum on his hip the whole time, is going it in slow motion, just feels it, gets it wherever he wants to go, just that total feel and control for what's going on. Tatum's still missing a little bit of that feel. He's forcing his way into the lane a lot. He's pulling up for awkward shots at weird yeah. times, off balance, off of the wrong leg, leaning in the wrong direction. Still too many fallaways. Uh, just there's still just too much of that. He's making life harder on himself. I don't really understand it. And then those lapses in those those those, those uh, the, the focus issues as well. I, you know, it, it was a frustrating game. Yeah, it's almost like he has tunnel vision in some parts of the game, right? It's like the one play that drove me crazy and it wasn't a, it wasn't detrimental into them losing the game, but it's just, just a perfect example of sometimes where I don't know if he sees the bigger picture, but he's driving to the lane. He has a layup, you know, with one option. The other option is to dish it off to uh, Tristan Thompson, but who, who double team down low. And then there's Shemi Ojale in the, wide open in the corner and he goes for the double team and they, it's a, it's a quick turnover. The, the Mavs respond on the other end. And I just, kept thinking whenever that would happen and it seemed like it was like every other you know offensive possession in that first five six minutes of the uh, fourth quarter it had Tatum ran all over it the, the the turnover itself you know and, and while Kemba Walker was scoring and while even Jalen Brown was scoring and getting to the rim I just thought his his uh his turnovers and him trying to find his offensive rhythm hurt the Celtics in those stretches the most important stretch you know in that fourth quarter What's the story of Luka Doncic, too, through two years now? So much more with so much less. He's playing with Finney Smith, Brunson, Richardson, who I think is just dreadful, uh, Tim Hardaway, who's like a bench player in this league, and he's leading them to 110 with that. Perfect facilitation, getting into the lane, perfect passes. His rollers aren't that good, but he still is a great elite pick-and-roll player. I mean, this guy's just... He's miles ahead of Tatum, frankly. Like it's it's not even close between miles. those two. Miles. I mean, it's, it's not. It's it's everything. It's the playmaking. It's the feel. It's all of it. Uh, and he still doesn't look like he's in great shape. I mean, he, he looks he looks doughy compared. You know, he, chubby. <laughs> he does. He did not like come baby in. Baby fat. He still has baby fat. He's always he's young. Always has that going on. Yeah. He's young. He'll grow. He'll he'll chisel up. But yeah, so, they need so to get him some help down there. Get, young people don't get thinner. <laughs> I mean, old people don't get thinner. So, so Brunson, <laughs> you know, so Brunson, it doesn't go goes Brunson, in the other direction. Goes the other way. <laughs> well, you think he's on that NBA like diet and regimen that he would thin out a little bit, but hey, it might just be genetics. You know, we don't know. So, you know, he, you know, I think whatever he's doing is working for him. So, I don't think he's he strikes too me much guys. European players that secretly smokes like you know, fifteen to eighteen <laughs> cigarettes a day. Oh yeah, like you can see, catch him in Monaco in the off season, just you know, <laughs> ripping it up. Who was the Vitor? Was it who? Didn't the Celtics have a guy? Vitor Favaroni. Oh, rest in peace. He's oh, right. didn't he? Oh yeah, he looked like a guy who who enjoyed a cigarette. Oh my god, I, I think that European, <laughs> the Europeans, man, it's a whole different ball game with with the uh, smoking. I mean, it's, it's yeah, we oh, yeah. look smoke in the locker room at halftime. Wasn't grew up in Spain. No. Anyways, Brunson Brunson's that random guy who the Celtics make look like a superstar tonight. There's like one every game, I guess, or every other game. 
Oh, Lord, he just picked them apart in the fourth. And that's a guy you look at and you're like, wow, the Celtics could use that facilitator. Oh, my Smart God. offensive he's... driver engine. Raja was another Perfect. one. He was a smoker. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Oh, I thought you heard me. I, I was like, wasn't Dino the guy they used to smoke butt during halftime? Dino, Raja. He'd go out back and, and smoke during halftime, I, I heard. Yeah, I could see that with Nikola Jokic too. And he's another guy who's been a little bit overweight, but still able to ball in spite of it. <laughs> Jokic. I wonder if anyone on the Celtics he's still, he'd still be he'd still be unstoppable. <laughs> he doesn't need to get off the ground. He requires zero physicality to do what he does. He literally does it all in slow motion. You know, yeah. boom, boom, oh he, my lord! It's yeah, my guy. My guy could rip like three or four butts at halftime and still no triple double on you like it's nothing. Nope. Like, yeah, no problem. He came um, out Celtics of nowhere. Need a smoker. Celtics might need a cigarette Celtics smoker. Need a smoker. So, I mean, I don't want to take it back to Brad, but people are going to take it back to Brad. It's again, low effort games just drive you mad because it's it's, it's again, you could see, you know, he was shaking his head in that third quarter, you know, it's just frustrated watching the team out there just kind of walking through the paces. When you've got I mean, Homer broadcasters like Gorman and Scal kind of like, I don't know if this team's got it. You know, like that's got to give you you know, I listen. I had to. I had to run an errand. I listened to part of it in the car, and then, and then, and then, and then the rest on the broadcast. And both sets of announcers were like, "Man, this team is not right." You know, like when you've got the home time announcers bashing the team, that's got to set off some red alarms. You know, some 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 uh, some red flags. I was on ESPN tonight. I didn't hear the uh, the boys in uh, NBC. Yeah.